<laughs> Hello everyone, it's Milo here, and welcome back to the Holiday Cube Draft 2015. The players have lit the menorah and are ready for eight crazy rounds of Magic the Gathering cube action. So it is the holidays, and we're playing with the Holiday Cube. Um, you've drafted. Did you find it different from the new cube? Uh, yeah, there's definitely a lot more power in this cube, and a lot of cards I haven't seen before. So, um, and a lot more interactions. It's, it's a little bit. You got to think a little bit more between your picks between the new cube. After we finished drafting, you turned to me and you showed me a bunch of cats. <laughs> Did you know that Cat Tribal's not a deck? Uh, I think it can be a deck. I, I, that's what I did. The uh, white, uh, white green cat deck. I got the Kasali Pride Mage. I got the uh, Scythe Leopard. I got the Fleece Mane Lion. Although I did pass on the Step Links, though. I don't know whose deck that ended up in, but that might. You're gonna be regret that one for the rest of your life. It might be the downfall of the day. Uh, so I have some trivia questions that I'm asking everybody. Uh, are you good with magic trivia? No, not really. Um, and I know it's about the cards in your cube, and I don't really know that many of the cards in your cube, so... Well, we'll, we'll be playing for a pack of Magic Origins. Okay. And uh, your question comes from Windmill Slam. They're a YouTube channel. They do a Magic the Gathering game show, so they're used to making questions. Okay. Your question from Windmill Slam is, the Shadow Mage Infiltrator is which pro player's invitational card? I really don't know. I, I know the card, uh, but I, I don't know the... Uh, if you had to take a stab at it. I really, I have no idea. I could tell you like all of the, the stuff about the card, but I I don't know. The answer is John Finkel. Mm. I knew that one! <laughs> Did you really? <laughs> yeah. Mm. Felwar Stone is an old mana rock that's been in many cubes and commander decks for years. In what set did Felwar Stone make its debut? Uh, Ice Age. It is the dark. The dark, I'm sorry, Dave. So what's really sad is it's in my deck. <laughs> <laughs> and it's the one from the dark. <laughs> Your question is, what is the full name of the white and blue legendary conspiracy creature who blinks your non-land permanence when he deals damage to an opponent? I have no idea. I don't remember. That is Brago, King Eternal. I'm here with Theo. Nice hat. Thanks. <laughs> nice sweater. Thanks. No Which one of these modes is not written on Mystic Confluence? Oh, okay. Counter target spell unless its controller pays two, draw a card, or return target creature to its owner's hand. Uh, the first one. That is correct! It's unless its controller pays three. So You're you've right. won a pack of yeah. Battle for Zendikar. It's a, thank you, that's awesome. It's Yeah, it's mana leak, bounce a creature, and draw a card? Yeah. Alright. Yeah, that card's awesome. It's busted. Okay, so we are looking at Milo playing Sultai Tears versus Cassius playing Abzan Hoarders. We'll find out a little bit more about these decks in a second as the players start to play. Uh, if you are curious, the deck lists are in the description of this video. So if you want to take a quick look to see what uh, I'm running and what Cassius is running, you can do that now while these players are trying to figure out if these hands are good today. So obviously, since I'm playing, I'm recording this audio in post. Sorry about that. We had different plans, but we were a little rushed. So I, I started with a Tropical Island for a Noble Hierarch. Great card. Uh, and he started with uh, Gravecrawler, an aggressive card. Gravecrawler, of course, can't block. 
So I am free to swing in with that noble hierarch. That's not what I do. Instead, what I do is uh, play a true name, Nemesis, choose Cassius as uh, my opponent, or or the player that has protection. That sorry, the player that true name Nemesis has protection from. Uh, Cassius plays a swamp and then a mana crypt great card into a damnation. Um, yeah, so I was feeling pretty good about that true name Nemesis, uh, seeing as how most of the time a uh, deck playing black is going to want to make you sack a creature to get rid of it, and I had the Noble Hierarch to sack. I play an Ancient Tomb, take two damage, and I play a Morph, keeping the Tropical Island untapped. Whoa, spoiler alert! That Morph is a Radiclaw Mystic. So, just keeping you informed so that you can be 100% sure I'm making the wrong decisions when I make the wrong decisions. Um, if I make the wrong decisions. So, we've agreed that he will take damage on heads for the coin flip for Mana Crypt. He does not take damage as he has flipped a Tails. Tails, a famous Sonic uh, the Hedgehog character who we all know and love. Cassius apparently playing mono black, uh, as far as I know. Instead, he plays a pack rat, discards a marsh flats for another pack rat. These may or may not be the hoarders we were talking about. So we're deciding what we can do for tokens. I pull out my Konza Tarkir Fat Pack box, which is where I hoard my tokens. So we have a bunch of baseball player stickers. He uh, optioned for Long Arm Larry as his first pack rat. Clutch decision there. So pack rats, they're, uh, hard, they're hard to deal with. They're hard to deal with card normally. And Mana Crypt was really good for him. Accelerated into that damnation and then being able to play the following turn Pack Rat into Pack Rat. That's pretty clutch. So, what, what can we see in my hand here? We have a forest, a phantasmal image. That was all I could see. I play the forest. It's an extended art forest. Oh, I have a Bitter Blossom, no black mana, and a Control Magic. The Extended Art Forest was done by someone from the YouTube community who sent that to me. And if you're watching this, thank you very much. It's in the cube as a permanent land choice for all the players. So... At this point, what I gotta think about is if I'm gonna block. If I'm not gonna block, I should probably be attacking. Because if I could get him to trade, which is very unlikely, then I could control magic the other one. Which would be a spicy meatball of a play, let me tell you. Real spicy, uh, spicy jam. So we're gonna go for it. Of course he's at 20 and does not care. Could not care less about 2 damage, so he just takes it. <clears throat> so my options are to control magic, a pack rat, um, phantasmal image of pack rat, And that's it. I can't play the Bitter Blossom. So those are my only options. If you were in this situation, please let me know what you would have done in the comments. I take two more damage from the Ancient Tomb. And I attempt to control magic his original pack rat. The control magic that we have there has a giant Cthulhu on it. 
It was altered by the artist of that commander control magic. It's a commander. He again misses on the mana crypt, the best uh, Sol Ring in history. Zero mana, tap for two mana. No side effects, no drawbacks. So if he plays another land, he can play Pack Rat, Pack Rat. As is, he can just go Pack Rat. Now we're playing the Pack Rat game. Pack Rat, of course, dominated uh, limited environments in Return to Ravnica. People would say that if you drafted a Pack Rat and you played Pack Rat in 39 Swamps, okay, so we have a forest from Cassius, and he's going to go uh, discard Evolutionary Leap. Uh, and what was the other card? Avacyn's Pilgrim. Pack Rat, Pack Rat, and then attack with a Pack Rat. My Pack Rat is still just a 1 1 because it's equal to the number, power and toughness is equal to the number of Pack Rats you control. I control 1, he controls 3. Therefore, his Pack Rats are a little bit bigger than mine. Now, I have a few outs to this, uh, to this nonsense that's happening here. City of Brass um, does come at a cost of some lives. So we have a Phantasmal Image copying the Pack Rat. So now my Pack Rats are 2 2. It's cheaper than uh, activating a Pack Rat, but it comes at the side effect that if he targets the Pack Rat, that's Tails again. And I point out that that is a very good Magic the Gathering card. He could just as easily be at 9 life now. So there's an added drawback of my one of my pack rats in that if he targets it, it dies. So he discards Shieldred, uh, the Whispering One, to make another uh, baseball player. He almost has an entire infield now uh, coming at me. So we got first, second base, and third base attacking my face. I have uh, the Radical Mystic. That we all know and love, and I have an option of making a third pack rat. Discarding that bitter blossom. So my man my my man is gonna cost me uh three life here. And I discard bitter blossom and I make a pack rat. So I only have three pack rats and he has four. But if I can kill one pack rat, then there'll be three threes, and then that pack rat would trade with that pack rat. So that's what I attempt to do. Now I could also block with the morph, um, block one of the pack rats, and it would die as well because when the four power one dies, they're all three three. Then the three power one will die, and then there'll be two twos, and then the two the sorry the two toughness one will die because of the morph, the two damage that the morph dealt, but. I know my outs in this situation, and I'm counting uh, Sword of Light and Shadow as one of the outs. So I could bring back True Name Nemesis and uh, make him take a lot longer, and then I can bring back Chump Blockers. Um, I just consider the Sword of sorry, the Sword of Light and Shadow in my deck as an out. So that's why I want to keep a creature active. I also have a, I have a few pieces of the sweet equipment. Sorry, I'm just gonna take a quick look at the deck list here. We got all the players to fill our deck lists, and that was uh, harder than you would think to get some of the players to uh, agree to fill out a deck list. Especially when I'm asking them to put their name on it. 
and that's pretty tough. Alright, so he discards um, ooh, it was, he discards a good one. The uh, Blood Soaked Champion, so now he can bring it back because he attacked. I guess that's also good with the Grave Crawler. I pack it up. I can't keep up with all these pack rats. That's game one. We're going to go over to game two. Yeah, so just taking a quick look at uh, my sideboard here. I have a Basking Root Wallet if I want to get tricky by cloning his pack rats. Uh, I have an Edric. A Pernicious Deed. I uh, definitely brought that in. You can see it in my hand, actually. So Pernicious Deed is my out to pack rat nonsense. Keeping in mind, I still have to pay two because it, the pack rats clone their casting cost. So we have a Marsh Flats. Cassius finally takes damage for his mana. So I don't really know what my plan is. I do have uh, some nice little things going on in this deck. I have a... Um, I mean, I have equipment with True Name Nemesis, so that's always good. And we see that pack rat again. Ugh, gross. I got nothing but Lawn or Elves. I'm going to need mana if I'm going to get out of this situation, so you might as well play your Lawn or Elves. Cassius, obviously. His turns are going to be pretty straightforward from now on. He's going to be making pack rats. He does forget to attack with uh, his pack rat. So I get off light here. Ooh, that is a survival of the fittest. Gives me some options. Unfortunately, I don't have a third land drop. I do have a Vampiric Tutor, Pernicious Deed. I have four black sources in the deck. Might not be enough to warrant a Vampiric Tutor, actually, now that I think about it. Oh, he plays a Lotus Cobra instead of... Oh, I mean, he still has the mana, I guess, to... Pack rat it up. Discards Evolutionary Leap again. Apparently that's what that card does. So he comes in for six. I take six. I use Survival of the Fittest. Discarding uh, Edric. I have an option to take Option of Baloth. Don't have the mana to cast it. Bone Shredder, Ulamog, Phantasmal Image, Noble Hierarch, Venser, not a bad one, uh, Scavenging Ooze, Shardless Agent. Uh, I feel like Shardless Agent's the best bet to get me back in this game. I can flip maybe another creature, maybe, hopefully not a Mana Dream, <laughs> maybe an Ancestral Visions. If that's not already in my hand. We can get a Scavenging Ooze, a Noble Hierarch. Both would be good. Bitter Blossom would... I don't know. I don't know if Bitter Blossom would be good. I guess it would be okay. It's a Chump Blocker every turn. Okay, so we untap. I don't believe I drew a land. I 
I do have the pernicious deed in my hand, so I just need mana at this point to get back in the game. Oh, I did draw land. So that's good, because I can play the Shardless Agent, and I flip Scavenging Ooze right off the top. That wasn't uh, sketchy, not sketchy at all. Um, and I still have the mana from the Lawnor Elves to use Survival of the Fittest. Put that Edric back on camera so you can see that was, in fact, a creature that I discarded to survival if it is. No shenanigans here. I also have a Mind Twist in my hand, which would slow down the Pack Rat shenanigans, I guess, to just one Pack Rat a turn. Oh, I have the Green Warden of Marassa, a Mana Drain. So if I had the mana drain in hand, it wasn't so bad going for that Charless Agent. He just drew a uh, Mana Crypt. So you can just play the Mana Crypt and then discard two cards for Pack Rats. I can also exile a creature from a graveyard. So he played a land, used the mana from Lotus Cobra to uh, generate the first pack rat, and then he played, paid three mana, discarded the mana crypt for the second pack rat. So pack rats are five fives. Uh, he is attacking with the Lotus Cobra as well. So um, I think that my out here is that I definitely need to leave the Lawner Elves alive so that if I draw a black source. I can cast Pernicious Deed, and if I cast Pernicious Deed for two, it's going to kill the Scavenging Ooze anyway, so there's no point in trying to grow my Scavenging Ooze here and keep it alive and block the Lotus Cobra and then use this Shareless Agent to chump a Pack Rat and then take ten, uh, bringing me to four. It's probably just a better idea, since my only out now at this point is a Pernicious Deed, to just go for um, double chump, preserve my life total, and uh, use Lawn or Elves at end of turn to uh, filter out my deck with one less creature, making it a tiny bit easier for me to draw that black source. So I double chump, take seven, brings me to seven, and I'm going to use this uh, Lawn or Elves here. Discarding Green Warden of Marassa. So now what I have to think about is uh, if I draw my Black Source and I can stabilize this game, then what will help me stabilize further? Um, post board like po post board wipe and that would be an obstinate Bayloth I think so I draw is it what I wanted is it something I can use no it's a noble hierarchy so unfortunately I'm unable to stabilize the board here and the Sultai tiers are my own I offer the handshake and thank Cassius for an amazing game of Magic the Gathering uh, join us next time when we have two other players playing the Holiday Cube Draft 2015 only on Mile of the Gathering thanks everyone, bye